the part one emergency department. So just as a basic introduction, what is stroke? Well, stroke is um, also known as a brain attack. It's an acute central nervous system injury that results in neurologic signs and symptoms, but on by a reduction or absence of perfusion to a territory of the brain. The disruption of this flow is from either A, um, the first kind of stroke, an ischemic stroke, um, or B, a rupture um, of a vessel, which is also known as a hemorrhagic stroke. So for an ischemic stroke, this can be caused by either um, a law, uh, artery being lodged um, by like an embolism coming from the heart or um, from an obstruction of like the carotids. Um, there's multiple different kinds and this is a majority of strokes. This accounts for about 85% of all strokes. On the other hand, uh, uh, a uh, hemorrhagic stroke, um, is caused by a rupture of one of the major blood vessels in the brain and is a bleed. And this accounts for about 15% of stroke, so much less common. So what are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? Um, the major um, telltale signs can be described in the acronym known as FAST. And this can stand, stands for F, facial drooping, a, arm weakness, and this means unilateral arm weakness, so one side or the other, not both. Um, speech difficulties, or, and um, the T part means time. So the importance is as soon as these um, symptoms are recognized to call 911. Um, this is a very important slide that kind of tells you how important time is when it comes to stroke. So for every hour an acute ischemic stroke, 830 billion synapses die, 120 million neurons die, um, the brain ages 3.6 years per hour, and every minute 2 million neurons die. So if you just think about that, um, how every, every second in stroke matters. So what is the treatment for stroke? Well, the approved treatment is known as Ultiplace or Activase that you'll hear also called TPA. And this is known as a clot busting treatment for those um, ischemic strokes. Um, this is the first line of treatment. Um, and the thing that is important to note is that this has to be, this is a time sensitive treatment. We have to give it within three to four um, and a half hours of last known well time. Certainly the sooner you can give it, the better, but it can be given for up to three to four and a half hours. So our goal is to give it as soon as possible. And in the emergency department, we set a goal for the time that the patient arrives to the ER that we are giving it within 60 minutes of their arrival if they are determined to be a candidate for this type of treatment. So we want to give it as soon as possible. So um, this is just a, a slide that talks about how we um, collaborate with EMS so that we can give this treatment as soon as possible. So um, the paramedics that are out in the field, um, they will notify the hospital and give this pre-notification of when they think that they have a patient that is a, a potential stroke patient. So they will actually um, activate the hospital-wide stroke alert and let us know, our emergency department know that this patient is coming in. Um, and then we can activate our emergency medical response um, in, the, in the emergency department to prepare for this stroke to come. Um, also important is um, EMS in the field, they'll triage and stabilize the patient. So if they're having, it, you know, our, our ABCs, our airway, breathing, and circulation, um, they will stabilize and then prepare to transfer them to the nearest stroke center, whether it's by ground in an ambulance or um, flighting them. So um, this slide is important um, for the emergency department nurse, um, the very initial assessment when this potential stroke patient hits the door. Um, 
it's very important whether this patient is coming in via an ambulance or coming in through the front door of the hospital that we have rapid um, tools available to help us quickly identify is this a potential stroke patient and we use um, our rapid screening tools such as fast um, you know if our patient is presenting with any of those signs the facial droop the arm weakness the speech difficulties um, once um, you know any of those signs have been identified the next step is the emergency department will activate their stroke protocol or call it code stroke um, or whatever that institution um, their you know stroke alert um, system is activated um, the next step is to again stabilize the patient in um, the ED, make sure that their airway is clear, that they're breathing okay, and that circulation um, is intact. And then the next step is to do a brief focus assessment of the patient and try to identify um, what these um, what their symptoms are and localize. Um, one of the, the tools that we use here is the NIH SS Stroke Scale, the National Institutes of Health Stroke Severity Scale. And this is a validated tool that helps us to, um, uh, to, to, um, to understand um, the severity of the stroke um, and the type of treatment going forward. We use this a lot, um, and I will talk about it more in the intensive care unit portion of my presentation. The next um, important um, part is, and perhaps one of the most important, is to um, establish when the patient was last seen well or the last known well time. Uh, this can oftentimes be a challenge to determine. We have to, uh, especially if we don't have family available, um, and the reason that we need to figure um, this out as soon as possible is to identify if this patient is a candidate to receive um, the TPA treatment because it is a time sensitive treatment. So we do our best in the emergency department to contact family um, or anybody that was a witness so that we can determine is this patient a candidate. And then it's also really important to try to get um, a history on this patient to know their medical history, their surgical history, any medications that they might be taking, if they're on blood thinning medications, if they take aspirin, also to know their social history, um, are they a drug user is important to know, um, and also important family history, such as do they have prior family histories of strokes. Stroke team models. So this is um, an important um, model. Stroke team models are important for hospitals to have. Um, there's special, specialized protocols and pathways um, that are important so that we can be ultimately fast and provide the best care for our stroke patients in a timely manner. So um, for example, at Stanford, our stroke team um, is a team of nurses, of doctors, of nurse practitioners, our laboratory department, the radiology department, our transport staff. And when we activate a stroke protocol, all of the appropriate staff um, respond to these alerts. Um, and what's important when we first, when our stroke patients first hit the door, is that we do the appropriate diagnostic workup in a timely manner. And this includes rapidly getting the patient to the CAT, the CT scan. And why do we do that? The reason that we do that is we obtain a non-contrast head CT is to make sure that this patient has a bleed. Because if it's that second kind of stroke, the hemorrhagic stroke, these patients are not going to be patients that we are going to be treating with the IVTPA. We also make sure that we are drawing the appropriate labs in a timely manner. So our lab department comes and they draw just basic labs, your CBC, your comprehensive metabolic panel, a COAG panel to see um, you know, if the patient already is on blood thinners, and also to check a troponin level to make sure patients um, are not having a heart attack. Also to check an EKG and um, in some cases obtain a chest x-ray. 
And it's very important that all of this appropriate staff are in constant communication. Um, for example, you know, once the head CT scan is done, that the you know, the radiology department informs, you know, the treating physician or the emergency department physician or the neurologist that the scan is done so that they can immediately look at it or to, um, you know, let the lab know the patient is back. You can come draw the labs now. So that's very important. And, and it's very important, to, um, lastly, that we have the stroke team so that we can make the rapid decision and determine is this, um, a candidate to receive ID, IV TPA, and ultimately to reduce our door to needle time. So that's kind of um, what we call it by the time the patient hits the door to the time that we're giving um, the IV TPA, we want to give it in the shortest time possible. Um, as far as stroke treatment goes, we call um, that door to treatment time is kind of known as the golden hour. And so this um, slide just kind of summarizes that golden hour. So it starts at zero is the time that the patient arrives to your emergency department. Within the first 10 minutes of arrival, um, it is our hope that the physician, the treating physician, um, sees this patient and evaluates them. We get a quick patient history. We establish the last time that they were seen well. We also start initiating any other lab work and we assess the patient using that NIHSS stroke scale. And then within the, in the next five minutes, um, we make sure that once we have identified that this is a possible acute stroke patient, we make sure that the stroke team um, is activated, that we are activating our stroke protocol. Within the first 25 minutes, we wanna make sure that we get the patient to the CT scanner and we get that non-contrast head CT to rule out a bleed. And then um, our next time point is that that scan is interpreted by a radiologist within 45 minutes and we can determine, is this patient a candidate to receive IV TPA? and then to ultimately give that TPA within 60 minutes. So basically, um, as an emergency room nurse, none of this can be accomplished without the bedside nurse. So this is just a summary of um, the roles of the emergency room nurse and what your what the important tasks that need to be done within that first hour of the patient um, hitting the emergency department. So just to do a rapid assessment of the patient, um, are they protecting their airway? Um, how is their breathing? How is their circulation, their blood pressure? To get a quick assessment of their vital signs. Um, like I said, our goal is to get the patient to the CT scanner within 25 minutes of hitting the door. So getting that, the patient ready to go straight to the CT scanner to make sure that they have IV access um, to get labs, if, um, whether the nurse is drawing these labs or the laboratory department, those should all be done within the first hour. Um, the nurse is also um, responsible for making sure that they um, can obtain a patient history to talk to family, and most importantly, establish that last known well time. Um, if the patient is determined to be um, eligible to receive IV TPA, their role is to prepare the TPA or to get it from pharmacy, and to the nurse is the one that is actually um, either giving, a t giving the, hanging the TPA in some institutions, and in some institutions the physician gives it. It just depends, um, it's facility dependent. Um, another one of their important roles is to monitor their neurological exam and their vital signs consistently and very frequently. And then lastly, to facilitate and transfer. Um, if the patient is going to be going to the intensive care unit or if they're going to be going to the stroke unit. And that um, concludes part one, the emergency department.